Hi, this is Thomas Severinsen at Danish Song, and today's topic is running. Running or jumping or bouncing or in some way just um, uh, getting active in our rhythm, in our rhythmical movements. So the cool thing about what is good with uh, running is to increase elasticity. And we can say that the more uh, we bounce and make our body like a bouncing ball, the better elastic um, training we are doing for our body. So elasticity is really good when it comes to also force transmission, when we are talking about um, pushing, dragging, uh, lifting, pressing something, and we can use that uh, kind of elastic bounce to get more out of our training. And one thing I also wonder that you need to ask yourself, why are you running? Are you running away from something? Or are you running toward something? Because that is critical when it comes to our thinking and our psychological patterns. If we are stressing and we need to feel that we need to run away from our stress or run away from something, uh, that could potentially create damage in the long run because then we are not so mindful in our body and we can create overload in our joints, especially our knees, maybe our hips, even our ankles and also our foot. So just ask yourself that question. And I'm running toward something. I'm not necessarily running toward that um, five kilometer or that mile or two mile, but I'm running toward uh, better health. And I'm running toward getting more elastic bounce in my body. So if you kind of observe young kids, that's a good example. And you see kids kind of play around, you know, they have all this elastic energy. And that is something I run forward. So I train to get that same elastic uh, energy that kids have. But of course, kids don't are aware of that. And they just do things for playing and having fun. But their myofascial system, that means their muscles and their uh, fascia, their connected tissue, is very elastic. And we can lose this elastic ability as we get older. There are numerous ways of training elasticity throughout the body. But running or bouncing is something really good. And also what is very important when it comes to running is our footwear. So we don't really want to have so uh, much uh, distance from our feet to the ground. So thick uh, soles uh, and uh, thick shoes, running shoes, is not so good actually. The best uh, running shoes you can ever have is your bare foot. And that is the reason because in your feet there are free nerve endings. And these nerves, in a simple way, just takes up that vibration that you bounce or step down with. And the nerve's number one job is to take that nerve information, that vibration, from your 80 kilo or 60 kilo or whatever, from the ground and up through your joints, up through your tissue, and kind of tell your tissue and your muscles how to compensate or balance that pressure. So it's very important. And there's stuff you can do before you start running, like just uh, squeezing your toes in your foot, or better, barefoot, get that sensory information from some type of textile, some uh, texture on the ground. So I've been doing this before I came here. And then, when it comes to running, we are interested in light uh, bouncing. We are not going to run and feel like heavy, so we need to run for the right reasons. And now I'm going to show you kind of how I usually warm up, especially in a cold autumn winter day, with uh, skip roping. So, using skip ropes is a genius way to kind of just get the bounce in the body. And then I kind of like to just do it side to side. And then I move my body side to side. This is kind of an easy way of skip roping without actually jumping in the rope. And if you then want to jump in the rope, you can stop, jump in the rope, or you can continue side to side and then jumping in. And I like to, you can jump with both feet. But I like to have most of my weight on one foot, then the other foot, and one foot, then the other foot. And I'm 
kind of mixing it up a little bit by landing on my toes, landing on my heels, especially not landing on my heels with the foot that I have the most impact on, but I landing on the toes with the foot I have most impact on and the heel with the other foot. So it becomes like this. Here I'm landing on my toes and heel, toes, heel. If you jump with both feet, you can do that too. But because it's a lot of load for our knees and our ankles and our knees, I like to kind of get that feeling that everything gets warmed from my feet and up through my knees and up through my hip and then continue up my core arms and wrists. And the wrist is really good also with the skip roping because you circulate your wrist and the more you circulate your wrist also you get like a good movement of your wrists. So. And as I'm jumping, I also like to focus on my breathing. Trying to breathe through my nose. When you breathe through your nose, you're actually helping your oxygen to go lower into your belly. And in your belly, you have the most blood. So when you get your oxygen down, you actually help to increase your oxygen in your whole body. And you can mix it up with both legs as you feel all around your knees are getting warmer. Oops. And also something important is to notice that our breathing really change our chemistry of our body. When you breathe faster and faster, what happens when you actually increase your stamina, your endurance, uh, when you train it like that, is that you also stiffen the, uh, the connective tissue. Because when you breathe faster, you increase more acidity in your body, and that acidity will actually lower your pH level, so the joints will actually get more protected by that stiffness you create stiffness in your body. So the oppositely, of course, when you breathe very slow, that uh, increases the pH to become more base, more uh, alkalized. So then you kind of loosen up your joints a bit more. And interestingly is that it just happens naturally. But that's why also a good sign that you are in a good condition is that if you can get your heart rhythm up and you get your endurance training up, so your heart rate goes up and up and up and up and up, your breathing goes faster, 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 then eventually when you stop exercising uh, that session, for example, the faster your heart can get to a normal phase and your breathing can get to a normal deep relaxed out breath, the better you are in shape. And the good thing also is when you do the ropes side by side like this, you loosen up your hip. Because that is something if you're gonna run for long, long time, what is very important is to actually use your whole body. So when you are running and eventually get tired, maybe in your thighs, in your legs, you can move that up to your hip and let your hip be more fluidly. So when your hip column can move more fluidly, you can take that, uh, that load that you're creating and move it more up through your body, even up to your shoulders if you're more sensitive like that. So, when we have been warming up, I feel now, then it's time for getting some running. And I'm gonna show you my way of running because I don't like to run for too long. It's also something we do with my uh, ectomorphic uh, body type. I burn a lot of calories. I'm more catabolic than I am anabolic. So I wanna preserve my muscles for the things I like to enjoy 
with strength calisthenics training and rock climbing. And also what can be really good is to run uh, on the grass or on the sand. So I actually choose to go barefoot, also what the same I was saying, with your activating your nerves in your feet. And if you want to really improve also the strength in your ankles, in your knee, your hip, your core, your overall, you're gonna run on the sand because the sand gives you a little extra challenge as you sink down. So that is also very good in that way because we are increasing our strength and our stability in our small muscles around our joints. So what I like to do here is to actually go for intervals. And uh, I'm gonna run like half the beach um, with my maximum capacity after I've been warming up with skip roping and a little bit of uh, running. And then I'm gonna walk slowly back. So it will look like this. And now, I'm just waiting for my pulse to get down, but I'm breathing a lot. But I'm trying to calm my breath down. And wait in my heart. Cool down. Slow down. And breathing is super important. Because actually we burn calories, yes. But to actually get rid of fat, we need to we need to breathe that carbon out. We need to breathe that fat out, literally. So the deeper you can breathe, and the more you can fill your lungs in all six directions. Left, right, front, back, up, down. And breathe out in those six directions you're going to use your lungs much more. You're going to get more oxygen in and you're going to get more carbon out. You're going to burn more fat out and your stamina endurance will just increase and increase and increase. And a good thing to know is that your heart is a muscle, you know? So you train your muscle. And like a muscle, when you train a muscle, you're, you want to you relax the muscle after so the muscle can recover. Same with the heart. Train the muscle to beat faster, pump more oxygen, blood out, and you want to, after, feel your heart rest and get back to normal. And the faster you can get back to normal, the better endurance, the better stamina and condition you have. So, this was this for this video. And also, what you was maybe seeing is that I'm going with the same tempo, and I did this now just five rounds. Of course, I can run the whole beach. That would take uh, much more of my max stamina capacity. And there's basically two ways to train condition. One way is to have low intensity, and the other way is to have high intensity. And there is difference, yes it is. Because when you train with low uh, endurance intensity, you increase your body to actually become more oxygen efficient. That means that you actually can carry more oxygen in you. For example, going for hours hiking in nature, low intensity, not uh, getting out of breath. And you also tap faster into your fat, so you can use your fat better as energy. When you go high intensity, well, then you actually train your heart a lot. Just what I've been doing now. Your heart muscle will be trained. You also can get, uh, yeah, better, uh, fast intensity, necessary when you need it.
so there is a difference and I will write more uh, under the video about descriptions on how you can train different types of endurance and for what type of body it suits the most and for how many times you should do this a week a month so stay in tuned thanks for watching and enjoy your stamina whatever level it is and of course for those of you that don't like running at all and want to actually have that bounce and that elasticity in your system you can also use a trampoline and a trampoline is really great because you're not moving any way just up and down and what I like with trampoline is to check if my knees are good of course you need to have good knees for doing this but you can jump also on one leg and then you have to equally distribute the tension through the elastic movement through your knee so not uh, all the tension is on one side or the outside or the inside but equally distributed so that's a good sign that your knees are in good shape And you can play on a trampoline with coordination. Yay! And having fun.